Alrighty, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry the Chupacabra, back once again to dive into that Ludum Dare 30 swimming pool with three more fun-tabular games. And this will be my last showcase reel before uh, voting ends next week, and we get to see who the finalists are. And then I will probably do a finale video where I talk about the winners and how they got the scores that they did. So we'll just jump in here with the first game, On the Edge of Earth, 5,000 by the hypno -Hustler. Okay, so we're here, we're on an intergalactic space station-y thingy, and um, we're a sort of uh, relaxed, almost um, Star Trek-y looking chap. We got, our, uh, we got our fancy overalls and a little stripe through the middle, and we are uh, the, uh, the only man on this mission. Uh, we're, we're very lonely in space, and so our mission is to go around and uh, revitalize planets. So, Project Connected Worlds, Station 10B3, Handbook. Congratulations, Jerry. You've been chosen as the sole operator for Station 10B3. Your mission is to generate new life on dead planets for the expansion of the New Earth Federation. A guide for using the Genesis missile systems can be found on the next page. So, first you got to go up and uh, calculate the distance using Terminal C... Enter the distance using Terminal D, load a new Genesis missile to the cannon, locate the outside spacesuit, or locate it on the outside. You're going to need a spacesuit for that. And then, um, once you've got the missile loaded, adjust the cannon uh, using the correctional piss, pit, 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 pitch terminal on Terminal A, and then use Terminal B to launch that thing. By the way, uh, Terminal A, B, and C is located on the upper deck, in case you didn't realize, because we got cheap and we didn't, uh, we didn't label anything. So, uh, good luck, champ! Alright, Jerry, you heard the man. We got to expand the empire. We don't get paid. So, um, I gotta say, right off the bat, this has got a really, I mean, it's, it's not, a lot of this art isn't exactly the most complicated in the world, but the usage of it is very simple. You can kind of tell what everything is. Like, this is a, a haircut of ma- Oh, this is a rock, paper, scissors machine. I can play rock, paper, scissors. Um, pick one. Scissors. CPU wins. Rock? Frickin' cheaty computer. Well, that's nice, I didn't see that before, but... It's a very nice ambiance, it's very fun and colorful. And our character, he looks like a regular old chum, this Jerry. And, um, I guess the first thing we'll do since we're downstairs and we'll grab ourselves a space suit while I think about it. So we're here in our space, uh, duds, looking a pretty suave if I don't say so my, uh, myself, Jerry. And, uh, we'll just flop upstairs using the old Elva Jigger. The Elva Jigger. Alright, so... We need it to go, first step, we gotta get the alignment orientation upstairs, and then this looks like the airlock. Yeah, it's the airlock. And, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Let's just flop upstairs. There's a really nice, uh, bit of sound in here. Everything's got its own, um, its own ambient sounds. Like, there's this humming in the background, like some machinery is kind of whirring away behind the walls. But we can also turn on the radio to Space Ruby Rod 57. Oh, this actually sounds like something right out of Fantasia now that I think about it, but it's pretty good. Alright, so we gotta get in here, and we've got to activate one of these consoles and get the pitch alignment or the, co the capitual space coordinates in order to um, do the thing. I uh, don't think this is the console we want. I know this is the launch console. Is this console C? There's no real um, 
There's no real labels on any of this. All right. Uh oh. Flicking Kajigger is all bonkered out. You see, you see, Galactic Space Federation. This is exactly why you don't go cheapies on the consoles. Freaking jittery old NASA crap from the turn of the century. Oh, we got four, two, five, four point two five. Come on, stupid. It's like I'm on my father's old freaking tube amp television that would turn green sometimes, and you had to smack it as hard as you could to jostle the tubes. All right, four, two, five. <sighs> Man, this is hard work, being a space cosmological guy. I don't know how George Jetson used to do this. I mean, he had to push a whole two buttons, and I got to push like five. This is some hard work. Man. But, um... Oh, well. Got to get to it, or else we won't get paid. And I kind of like this way of doing the door. It's super not complicated. It just enlarges the animation and puts it down to the floor. I like it. All right, we got to align it four point. No, that's too much. What if I put it to five point two five? What happens? Oh, there's Mr. Planet. Hi, Mr. Planet. Oh, oh, bye, Mr. Planet. All right, I guess it over. Oops, get my tunes back. Just trying to sprint. Do, 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 do. All right, we'll just put it back to four two five. And I thought that was pretty swell that you can actually see the alignment of the planet in the windows. And I almost think it would be cooler if you, instead of jiggling with that machine, if you could just have like window alignment because sometimes maybe there's like a random spawning mechanism where the alignment machine malfunctions and you have to do it by hand, but you gotta figure that out. All right, so we've got that aligned. We can't shoot the thing yet, and there's no targeting array missiles. Let's go do that. Close this, don't wanna decompress the whole space station. All right, come on, Jerry. You gotta hit the treadmill, man, you're so slow. You're so out of shape, you're just like Larry. Freaking digital freelancing age. All right, which one of these kajigas loads the Genesis missile? All right, okay. I'm afraid I can't let you back into the to the ship, Larry. I'm going to have to murder you. Stop! Stop doing that, chip computer. We're not pretending to be Space Nine Thousand, okay? Freaking Hal robots. All right. Before we get started, though, I need. I got prairie dog in it. I gotta use the restroom. Come on, Jerry. We're not supposed to leave any skid marks. We're gonna not gonna pass inspection if you have another one of those on the freaking floor. All right. <laughs> it actually works. Are you kidding me? I just thought that was a toilet. It actually has a piece of space poo. All right, all right, Mr. Hypno Hustler, that was pretty good. That is some serious refinement. But I gotta say, I enjoy this. This is a really well-refined package. It's it's a mini game, and if I really had to say where I think this is going, is I could definitely see this being like almost like a sitcom making fun of Star Trek. I'm sure you've seen those, like Red Dwarf, that show, and you, you just go through space and you have like really harebrained adventures like you're just like the most uncanny hero you're just trying to get your job done get some cash before you go back home and hang out with your parents because like you had no job press prospects out of college i don't know but i think you can have like this episode you launch the missile and save a plan and the next episode like you gotta pass inspection and you gotta like Kajankle a bunch of stuff in the ship back together with little mini games because it's like barely duct taped together because you got the crappy ship and if you don't pass inspection you get fired. I don't know. I kind of like it. So we just. Oops. I don't think we oriented that right. And so with this console, we just have to orient the laser targeting system in the window. So I think that's cool. It's more than just using the console. And then we can use this, um computer right here to launch it and so I think the only thing that I I feel this needs to have for a little bit of refinement 
is maybe some accent elements on the outside of the station to make it look more like a, a moving spaceship, because that's sort of what it is. But other than that, um, I like it. And initially I thought that maybe some of these different consoles and computers could use labels, but I honestly kind of like that each one of them's kind of got some crap that's like stickered onto them, and like the one downstairs, as I'm sure you saw, has got like a coffee stain in the upper corner and the coffee mugs over here. I think that's cool, and it gives you, it gives you something to think about, like an almost mysterious mystery kind of appeal to it that you have to kind of figure it out for yourself by trial and error, and I kind of like that. So very nice job. This is a sweet package. I'm, I'm pleasantly impressed. It's, it's, it's really fun. The art style is, again, fun and colorful. like it. Now do the thing. Do the thing, Jerry. Oh, good. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ay. Yay, we made another Earth. Jerry gets paid. I also thought that you did a nice job with the introductory pieces and the animations. Like, especially when you do that, that swirling zoom in, it really made me think about the Red Dwarf show, because that was sort of how they did their introductory sequence every episode, was just there's this... There's this dinky guy in space, he's barely alive, the whole ship is kerfluffled, and um, he's just got to get through the day-to-day -day obstacles of space travel and alien invasions and stuff. I don't know, I always liked the, um, not so much the underdog, but like the lazy jackhole who doesn't really want to do anything but has to just to survive. He's like the reluctant hero, I guess. He's just like, oh, fine, I'll, I'll fight off the Garaxians, just... Keep the computer running, J4, you bastard. All right, but nice job, Hypno Hustler. This was fun. It was simple, it was straightforward, but I think you could definitely turn this into, like, a storyline of different mini-games and funky stuff that kind of draws you through. Maybe you got to get a promotion, or maybe you just got to barely scrape along and keep your job. I think that would be perfect. And uh, I would suggest for the guy's name is Jerry or Benson, just for no particular reason. Okie dokie, next up we've got Tangled Mini Worlds by Lars Christian. And Tangled Mini Worlds is a three-dimensional puzzler game that takes us onto a cubicle dimensional planetoid that has different sort of um, people-y models of a farm, a cabin in the woods, and a city, and we have to realign them with their dimensional planes, or... In layman speak, put him in the, the undulating white circle. And so we will. And one of the first things that I noticed about this game, other than the fact that, yes, it doesn't have music, but I'm okay with that, is these little models, um, they're like squishy gel models, almost. They, they have the funnest little sprungy motion when you flop them around, and I think that's hilariously cute. And you don't need, like I've said before, you don't need a lot of complexity to make really good models in a game. And these are these are straightforward and simple enough, yet they kind of come across as exactly what they need to. This is a farm, this is a cabin in the woods, and this is a city, or maybe it's an alien Thermopylae. Who knows? But we'll just align these using the different planes and progress to the next level. And I think this is good. I mean, you don't need a lot more than this to make a splendid, fantastical puzzle game. You just need a very simple concept and then increasing levels of complexity in order for it to do the thing. And I think the only thing that I might want from it, just because I'm kind of a, a, a stickler in my puzzly games, I'm a big fan of three-dimensional puzzlers, um, I'm almost biased a little bit towards the three-dimensional puzzlers, is I really need a couple things. First, I need some dead ends. I need something to want to maliciously trick me into going the wrong way, and I almost need a lose state sometimes in some puzzle games. And so I think this sort of gives you some of that. Some of these, um, some of these inlets don't actually serve a purpose, like going all the way up here immediately. This inlet allows you to go up, but it's a trick. And so that's exactly what I'm talking about. Need lots of that. And maybe even try using more of the 
more of the faces of the cube because you got three and that's a good starting point but i feel like you could definitely go on you know the face over here the bottom and the far side over here as you go along to realign these planets and this really reminds me of the prince of persia games because they had a lot of weird little puzzles just like this that required you to think three-dimensionally with like rotating gears and all sorts of other fiddly stuff and then you know it was prince of persia so obviously sometimes there was a lot of time components going on because you had to deal with the sands of time so maybe like you could even have like a little thing here that activates a, a time rift like a swirling vortex of sands of time and uh, it would open up, say, over here, this corner was locked off on the plant or on the city's side of things until you opened that and you had to complete so many moves in the time period or else you had to reset. And um, yeah, I think this could definitely go places in the uh, puzzly world. It would make a really nice, simple smartphone game, too. I think the only thing that bugs me, aside from maybe adding a little bit of music and some sound effects, is some of the controls are a little bit sproingy, a little wonky as you can see. Um, they actually want to clip in, often as not, into other objects. But uh, aside from that, it's solid. It's got a fun little animation and art style. I dig it. A ding dong diddly dig it. Very nice job, Lars. I'd be uh, I'd be totally interested in seeing where this goes, and I'm I'm starting to think of like if you were to refine it, maybe how we do build out the artwork a little bit more because you didn't necessarily need to, I don't think, but it might be interesting to experiment a little bit. I mean, that's half of the development design process is you know trial and error, even during a limited forty eight hour competition. Um, so maybe like you could even have like an interdimensional alien rift that this has been torn into and the aliens, you know, they were trying to like fix their broken dying home world, but you're tearing it apart by being there. So you've got to realign the dimensional rift portals in order to save the day. I don't know, but you've got options. You could even have this be just an asteroid in space. And then sometimes it's like a wormhole in time sometimes it's a cafe outside of atlanta who knows but i think it's a lot of fun very nice work lars keep it up it's delectable all righty last but certainly not least we have trappy tomb by jimmy paulin and this is an interesting way of handling the concept of connected worlds and I know it's it's not always the best way to say it when you say something is related to another game sometimes it's kind of cheap but I honestly think that this has some elements of Dark Souls in it in that um, not so much the difficulty and not so much um, the way that it's handled and as you notice there's some statues here these are actually statues of people who have completed the game and their usernames and they'll sort of pop up with their ratings and their username as you pass by them. They'll be different each time. But um, it's got an interesting way of handling death and intercommunication of the failures of other players. Very reminiscent of Dark Souls. And so we have a very limited time here in this cave. We've got to get through all of these evil insidious traps, getting as much gold as we can. Before time runs out and everything explodes, and I'm kind of a little bit cheaty about this. And so the way that this handles connected worlds is you can kind of see these weird spectral patterns on the screen are actually other players and the paths that they took to get through here. And all the messages that we see are actually their dying um, message that they, they share with us about how to avoid getting murdered. Or maybe just some swears, depending on who the person is. And that's an interesting way of handling the connected worlds. You're interconnected to other players and how they floopty flopped up in this game. And I, before doing this, I probably played through this 20, 30 times before actually getting very far. Oops. And, oh, and here it is. The message popped up asking me if I'd like to uh, enter a thing. 
but I, I'm okay without. There's a lot of messages and they kind of get a little bit spammy, but that's okay. Um, that's, oops, that's just sort of what happens in a game where you're sharing a bunch of uh, publicly addressed messages. And Mr. Powlin is making attempts to um, moderate the messages so you don't um, get a lot of swearsies. Oops, jumped a little bit too early. But I think this is cool. I mean, it's it's very rep repetitious, just like trying over and over again in Dark Souls. Not so much the difficulty. Dark Souls is just difficult because it's very old school in a way for the control scheme. But I really like this. This is a lot of fun. The artwork's real strong. You get this like indie. Oops, didn't time the spikes very well. You get this very Indiana Jones sort of appeal to this game. And also with how people go about doing the way that they ugh, didn't jump. Do the jumpy thing. Going about how, like, seeing how people in a non-direct way go about their pathways because it's different for everybody, but there's a lot of patterns in human behavior, and I think that's always neat to see. And this is, it's very reminiscent also of the multiplayer Flappy Bird game. I don't know if you saw that during the Flappy Jam coverage, um, but there was this game, and you could see where everyone else was doing when they were playing the game as, like, phantoms in the background. So I thought that was kind of neat. And we'll just kite these bats a little bit. Ugh. I always mess up the hitboxes on this lava every frickin' time. But this is a good package. I like it. It's really fun. Everything's got a sound. There's a, there's a nice background melody. The only thing I might change is... Every time I'm playing with arrow keys, I always think to myself, it would be really nice if I could use WASD. Because, as somebody who plays with mouse and keyboard a lot in most of my games, like, say, League of Legends, or my shooter games that I play, using arrow keys when I could be using WASD, unless they're absolutely necessary, throws off my gamer flow. But that's... that's just me. I mean, if, if, if it's at all possible, throw it in there. It makes my life slightly more convenient and a little bit more relaxing. So we'll just... Be careful. Oh, bat died in the lava. We're just gonna ignore the gold. The gold isn't actually necessary. It's actually just kind of there. If you want it. Maybe it affects your score at the end, but we just want to worry about the timer and the traps. And so this is a difficult room full of illustrious murder. We just gotta kite these bats for a moment and jump the lava in order to get to those pressure plates. As yet, I have not beaten this game. My statue does not adorn the Hall of Heroes, nor do I think it will. This game has been the ever-loving death of me several times. But, um, it's good. I like it. Let's... Oh, crud. Ah, the bats got me. You gotta time those arrows up there and kill things. But no, I like this game. It's really good. It's got a nice package, nice artwork. Everything is pretty identifiable, um, except these things on the floor. No idea what those are. Maybe they're like sconce holders or something. But I think it's strong. And I think you could definitely expand this into a full multiplayer web game that has all sorts of traps and pitfalls. And initially I was going to say maybe work on how they handle some of the hitboxes for things like the lava. But thinking about it now, I think it's pretty devious. And so, the only other piece of feedback I might give is give people a reason to get those little golden idols. Because as it stands right now, there really isn't a reason to grab them. So maybe add in the ability to use them to increase your time so that the volcano... Ah, I can't seem to get that space to go off right every time. Some of the controls are a little sticky, but give people a reason to click on, to go grab those idols, and I, I, I'm bad with the clickies. But give people a reason to grab those idols, and I think you're good to go. Nice job, Mr. Paulin. Keep up the good work. Alrighty, well that's it for this particular showcase, everybody. Um, I will do a finale video, I believe, uh, after voting has finished, where I talk about how the, uh, games involved do their thing and won the 
praise in the different categories that they did. So until then, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Hit the description for uh, links to these delightful games. If you'd like to vote on them before voting ends, you don't have a lot of time, so I'd get to it. Otherwise, I've been your host, Larry the Chupacabra. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Toodaloo!